The HB Project and the HB Channel are supported by Hi-Fi Clubben. That sound kills good music. As with anything in life, copying CDs to a hard disk can be mystified. There are people that bow four times to the north and then spit three times to the south before ripping. And then there are people that think that anything goes. The old Dutch saying goes, let's leave the church in the middle. I think the Anglo-Saxon tradition is to leave the church out of it, but anyway, copying CDs to your hard disk is called ripping and the internet is full of stories on how that can go wrong unless you use special software that does certain clever schemes to safeguard your valuable audio data. This software might perform miracles in that case, but shouldn't be necessary under normal conditions. I'm going to mention a number of software programs that can do the ripping for you. These all do their jobs properly provided your computer is functioning properly. Problems will occur if your hardware, software drivers and operating system are not communicating with each other in a good way. This will seldom be the case with A branded computers like for instance those by HP, Dell and Apple when you use it with the operating system that came with it. For Apple computers you can use whatever Apple lets you use on it. For Windows computers do use the installation or restoration disk that came with the computer. If your operating system has been upgraded, for instance from Windows 7 to Windows 10, make sure to load the computer specific support files for that operating system from the support pages of the computer manufacturer. When you own a computer that was built by a local company, think things might work out well or not. The average clone builders have no affinity with audio and although they will test the CD-ROM or DVD-ROM drive, they might not test it critically using an audio CD. On the other end of the spectrum, there are companies that build computers that are specially aimed at the hi-fi market. These companies study every part of the computer and try to optimize it to the extreme. It doesn't make that computer a monetary attraction, but it can make a very fine audio ripper and player. The higher price might also attract business cowboys that charge you the higher price without the specialist work, except for the good sounding tech talk on their website. Often people only want to use their own their normal computer in a computer room for ripping and use a networked audio player in the living room for music. Then buying a specialist audio computer is a waste. If you stick to the aforementioned rules, you're probably ok. The number of ripping packages on the web is immense and reviewing them all is completely impossible. In this video I will point you to a limited number of software packages of which I'm sure they work on properly config configured computers. Please feel free to leave tips to other programs in the comment section below this video, but please do understand that I can't comment on software I haven't tested extensively and thus refrain, refrain from commenting. Regardless of the choice of ripping software, you have to set preferences. Often ripping software forms an integral part of a music organizing and playing software. If so, then the first setting we do might already be correct. The place the software stores your music files. Although you are free to choose the location yourself, it is for several reasons wise to go for the standard map or directory your operating system suggests. With all modern computers that is music or my music in the user directory. If you use a standalone ripper, so one that isn't the player at the same time, you might also opt for my approach. I always use a separate ripper and rip to a temporary directory on the computer desktop. I then use a separate program to alter the metadata to my likings and add the album art and then copy it to the directory where all the music is. Always save an album in a directory by its own and save that directory to a directory that has been named to the artist slash queen slash innuendo slash o1 dash innuendo for instance. 
The 01 is the track number and usually can be added automatically by the ripping software. Another preference you should set. Often it's even possible to define how you want the file name to be constructed. For instance, artist name, album name, track number and track name. That sounds like a good idea but will fail when the artist name, album name and track name are all long. Therefore the directory inside directory option is far better. Another setting you have to make is the file format. The main choice here is do you want to preserve all audio quality or sacrifice audio quality for smaller files. If the latter is the case you have two practical choices, MP3 or AAC. MP3 is a quarter of a century old and is followed up by AAC which offers the same audio quality at 50% smaller files. Both are perfectly suited for mobile use and if your player supports it AAC is the better choice. For both you can set the quality loss by varying the bitrate. MP3 at 128 kilobits per second KPBS is the lowest bitrate I would use in poor playback conditions. MP3 at 320 kbps has a low loss that often is inaudible on portable players and stereo in the box systems. AAC at 128 kbps has about the same audio quality as MP3 at 256 kbps while AAC at 256 kbps is considered to be slightly better than MP3 at 320 while using only 80% of the data. But for a decent stereo, say a well chosen set of 800 euros of above, you don't want to throw away audio quality. If you rip your CDs to WAV or AIF files and all goes well, you'll end up with exactly the same bits on the hard disk as are on the CD. This also means that both WAV and AIF contain the same audio bits and should sound fully identical. If that isn't the case, the player is not developed properly. The disadvantage of WAV is that it offers only limited metadata support, so it can store very limited information about the track. AIF is not limited here and therefore is the better choice provided your player supports it, which normally is the case. A disadvantage of both WAV and AIF is that it uses a lot of hard disk space. If you could pack it in with zip compression, it would take 40% less hard disk space without throwing away any audio quality, but then you can't play it without extracting it first. Luckily there are two ways to use a technique that works identical to zip but can be played directly, FLAC and ALAC. FLAC stands for Free Lossless Audio Codec and is a free, open standard and open source solution that is widely supported. The main exception being Apple. They have their own version, the Apple Lossless Audio Codec or ALAC. They are absolutely equal in quality and features, the only reason to choose for one or the other is your equipment. If you use a lot of Apple equipment and use it for music, ALAC might be the better choice. In all other cases there are no arguments for choosing one over the other except for compatibility with your other equipment. You will find comments on the web about FLAC sounding better than ALAC. Those are based on an error in some British player some years ago that didn't decode, decode ALAC very well. These problems have long been saved but the legend remains. What happens on the web stays on the web. You want to be sure all bits on the CD are copied with 100% accuracy to the hard disk. Since there is no playback during ripping, the software can repeatedly read a bad portion of a track until an errorless copy is obtained. Whether that works fine depends partly on the setting in the ripper, where you can set fast ripping or precise ripping schemes, but also partly on how well the ripping software, the optical, optical drive, the OS and the drivers in between work together. Big differences between optical drives are claimed on the web, but there is no way of telling if that really was the drive or rather the interfacing with the OS and thus the drivers involved. 
A way of telling whether a rib is perfect is using accurate rib. This is a system that stores a kind of fingerprint of each CD. Since there are countless numbers of users, the database is filled with good and bad rib results, but only the fingerprints of the good ribs will be identical. By comparing the fingerprint of your rib with those of the same CD in the database, it's easy to tell whether the rib was perfectly done. If the ripping software, the optical drive and anything in between, between do not work properly, ripping will also be slow if the precise ripping scheme is selected. If this is the case, try other drives until the CD is ripped in less time than the normal, normal playback time. If you just want to use good software to rip, go for exact audio copy or its luxury version Easy Audio Copy for Windows. The first one is free but has a rudimentary user interface. The second one costs 30 euros but has a very friendly user interface. For the Mac, XLD is a very good solution that also lets you convert between all kinds of audio formats. On the Mac with Apple approved optical drive, iTunes is good too, provided you set the error correction in the import settings menu. Other rippers I had positive reports on are for Windows Audio Grabber, Media Monkey, Music Match Jukebox and Windamp. On the Mac CDR tools, Handbrake, Pipit and Roxio Toast are often mentioned. For Linux the following names keep popping up in user groups as being good. Asunda, CDR Tools, Grip, K3B and Sound Juicer. If you use an A brand computer, one of the aforementioned ripping software and clean and scratch free CDs, ripping CDs is an easy although time consuming job. Do yourself a favor and check the metadata before you add the music to your collection. I will make a separate video on maintaining metadata soon and will add a link in the top right corner when finished. But you could also invest a heavy 7 euros in my book on streaming audio. The link is below this video on YouTube. And as always, if you want to stay informed, follow my Facebook or Google Plus page or my Twitter account. You can also post questions there, but please view my questions video first. See the link in the top right corner. You find the information below this video in YouTube. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and tell your friends on the web about it. I am Hans Beekhuizen for the HB channel. Thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.